Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. again. Hosanna. Welcome to Palm Sunday service. So glad you could join us this morning. Boy, that was fun. You should do that in your living room. Get out some palms and dance around. It's good for you. As we begin our service today, we acknowledge the land on which our church resides. Why do we do this land acknowledgement? Because we remember that Without the wholeness and wellness of the land, without the land being cared for and healthy, well, we have a sad future ahead. So our responsibility is to tend to the land, to care for it, to remember that we don't own the land. The land does not belong to us. We belong to the land. And so we acknowledge with respect to the history, tradition, and culture of the Mississaugas of the Credit who came to this place long before us, learned how to live with the land with respect. And so we are responsible for the territory on which our church resides. With that now, let us continue with our worship. Welcome, my sister. Welcome, my brother. Come, let us worship Please join me for our call to worship. Jesus entered into Jerusalem humbly on a donkey, seeking to transform the people. People gathered from everywhere to wave palm branches and praise him royally. Jesus enters into our lives humbly, as he did then, seeking to transform our hearts and lives. Let us worship together and receive Christ into our presence. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Let us pray. Holy One, today we celebrate your triumphant entry into Jerusalem so long ago. We also know that this day begins the final phase of your journey to the cross, a journey filled with pain and sorrow. We gather here to walk with you, knowing your fate and the suffering you will endure. We commit to the hope that we know your suffering will bring and trust in the power of your love to lead us. May we find the courage and strength we most need as we face the darkest side of our humanity. May we find the grace to forgive as you forgave, and by that grace may our true humanity be restored. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose humility trumps the power of the mighty, Quiet within us our certainty of knowing it all. Speak to us now through the suffering of Jesus Christ, that by the power of your Holy Spirit we may receive grace to show forth Christ's love in lives committed to your service. Amen. 
Our reading today comes from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. The Triumphant Entry As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Tell him the Lord needs it and we'll send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, what are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. In this reading, we hear God's voice. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. Today is special. We will be hearing this story told in a less conventional way. We'll be focusing a little bit more on one character who typically is rather silent in the story, but is a compelling participant in the narrative. I hope you will enjoy this lovely claymation short brought to you by Northex Productions, a.k.a. Joe, Donna, and Leanne. Enjoy. There was a time when people longed for a new king. The empire took advantage of every little thing. A man named Jesus claimed to be the Son of God Most High. He came to lead another way, to give God's love a try. When time came for the Passover, a festival and feast, people came from near and far, from west and from the east. Jesus told his closest friends, A donkey, go and fetch. He sent them to a tiny colt, a lowly little wretch. How am I to carry him? The donkey cried with fear. He's just weak and useless. The others gave a sneer. But Jesus came and said to him, Have faith in me. You'll see. We can do most anything if you just trust in me. The donkey did just what he said, and Jesus sat astride. With friendship sealed by faith and trust, they soon began the ride. They ventured to the city, so excited was the crowd. Jesus sat upon the donkey, and the beast was very proud. The people waved palm branches, and they shouted out aloud, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed be the King! Hosanna to the Son of David! Sing, sing, sing! Wasn't that adorable? Such a cute story. Have you ever felt like that little donkey? Has anyone ever asked you to do something and immediately said, No, I can't do that. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm too young. I'm too old. When my kids have said, I can't, my response is usually, it's not that you can't. It's either you don't want to or you're too afraid to do it. The thing is, it's often the things that we resist doing or are afraid to do that are the most important things for us to do. Doing those hard things helps us learn what we're made of, what we're capable of, what our true capacities are. We're able to develop confidence and trust in our deeper selves. Not the ego self. That part of ourselves will always be afraid of faltering or humiliation. 
No, I'm talking about the divine self, the very powerful inner self. It might even be one thing that we do, but it stays in our memory and will forevermore be evidence that we can do the hard thing, that we can trust the power that God has placed in us. When I was reflecting on that little donkey, I was reminded of a time many, many years ago. Uh, It was the early phases of my ministry, and I was very, very nervous. A colleague was coaching me on my presentation skills. The anxiety was so great. I could never keep my focus. I was always just so agitated and stressed that I would lose my words, and it would inevitably cause me to feel... uh, distressed and incapable of doing the job. So what he said to me once was, Leanne, look, we all make asses of ourselves from time to time. Think of it this way. You're making yourself an ass, or you're making an ass of yourself for Jesus. That helped me. That really helped me. It put everything in perspective. And from there on, I learned that if I put my focus on the message, and away from myself, it always gave me more confidence. And gradually I began to trust the message and eventually myself. To this day, that wisdom gives me courage to speak in public in spite of my fear and anxiety. We are never enough in our own minds, but we are all that matters in a moment when someone or something is in need. We are fully prepared in the deeper parts of ourselves to do what our minds will tell us we can't. The Spirit is always present in us to give us what we need in those hard moments. Whether you say yes or no or not right now, know this, you can do it. Remember that Christ was the one who faced the greatest humiliation of all, He is the source of courage and strength for all of us. His death and his resurrection showed us that we too can rise again. So go make an ass of yourself for Jesus. Join the parade and come to the table. Amen. As we prepare to come to the table, If you haven't already prepared, I invite you to uh, get your elements, pause the video, get your elements, and join us when you are ready. Do any of us feel ready to come to the table, to meet up with such abundant grace? Or do we carry within us sense of unworthiness or not good enough? Do we carry with us apprehension or resistance in some way? If so, let us just for this moment let go of all that resistance and inhibition and simply open ourselves to this beautiful grace that Christ has given us as gift. carrying a vision of creation healed and restored, we welcome all in the name of Christ, invited to the table where none shall go hungry. We gather as Christ's guests and friends in holy communion. We are commissioned to feed as we have been fed, forgive as we have been forgiven, love as we have been loved, The open table speaks of the shining promise of broken barriers and creation healed. In the communion meal, wine poured out and bread broken, we remember Jesus. We remember his journey. We remember how he eventually arrived arrived in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover with his friends. We remember him gathered at table with them. We remember too that Jesus knew what was coming. He knew that he was going to be faced with some of the more horrific experience of his life. 
And yet, he leaned in to the love of God, which gave him courage. And on that night, knowing what he knew, paused, he lifted the bread, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Eat it in remembrance of me. And as the evening wore on, he picked up the cup, he blessed it. He said, take and drink of this. This is my blood shed for you. Drink it and remember me. Then he passed the cup to his friends. And so now we gather, bread broken, cup poured out, and we pray that the Holy Spirit be upon this bread and this cup on this blessing that we might be restored to courage and strength so that we might be a visible revelation of grace in the world in the name of Christ. Amen. the bread of life. The cup of hope. We remember not only the promise, but also the price he paid for who he was, for what he did and said, and for the brokenness of the world. We taste the mystery of God's great love for us and are renewed in faith and in hope. Let us pray. We place our hope in you, O God. We sing of a life beyond life and a future a good future beyond imagining, a new heaven and a new earth, the end of sorrow, pain, and tears, Christ's return and life with you, O God, the making new of all things. We yearn for the coming of that future, even while participating in eternal life now. In our silence, we bring you the prayers of our hearts, Divine creation does not cease until all things have found wholeness, union, and integration with the common ground of all being. As children of the timeless one, our time-bound lives will find completion in the all-embracing creator. In the meantime, we embrace the present, embodying hope, loving our enemies, caring for the earth, choosing life. And now together, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we end this time together, I remind you that 
between one and two on this sun this Palm Sunday afternoon I will be available at the church for anyone who wishes to partake in our take-home elements if you'd like to come by to receive you're most welcome you'll receive a package of elements and a blessing if you'd like to take one or two home for family or friends you're more than welcome to uh, once again I'll be here between 1 and 2 at the church outside in the front yard at the kissing booth so you can find me there and as we end this time together I pray that you know that you are not alone that you find the opportunity to feast on grace and love and the promise of Christ his hope taking forward into the world that beautiful gift Amen. Photobomb! Hee hee hee!